What's up everybody, this is Caruso from Caruso's Gaming Reaction. I'm back with another video. Uh, this time uh, we're talking about Dragon Ball Super. Episode 101. I gotta tell you, I was highly impressed with that episode. A lot of people, you know, were ready to see Goku fight Jiren. But you gotta understand, they've been pumping this up for a while. So they're just not gonna fight right off the bat. There's a lot of other people yet to fall from the ring uh, in the episode you notice Topo tells Jiren that I was seeing five uh, troopers to fight Goku we need to conserve our stamina and so they just dash off and retreat uh, which I thought was awesome also a little update on Frieza he's still wreaking havoc all over the ring he's got Muchancha uh, 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 mentioned by his head and he just, I don't know what he did to him, but he just destroyed him and just threw him into the void. The cheetah really don't care. He's OP like hell in this. And I really do like it. Also, Goku, man, um, in my opinion, they, they made him look kind of weak. Because when that dude, when that pride trooper grabbed him from behind, and the, the one that can change his weight, he changes his weight back and forth. When that pride trooper grabbed him from behind, Goku could not get free. And Android 17, or yeah, Android 17 comes over and just blasts him off with no sweat. So they really are downplaying Goku's power. And Goku's probably the strongest guy in the tournament, period. And so I just think that's kind of weird that they're doing that. It doesn't look right. Because then when he does power up, and gets all this power. People are going to be like, where that come from? Why he didn't use that earlier? Doesn't make a lot of sense. So, I'm kind of a little, you know, a little disturbed by how, they do, how they're doing Goku. Because I don't think that's right. I think, you know, he should be able to fight to the best of his ability at all times. Not be weak and getting caught off guard all the time. Also, we learned a lot about Kale and Khalifa. Uh, this episode was basically about those two. They did a really cool job. It was really cool to see some more character depth with them. This is why I don't think Universe 6 will be destroyed. Because can you imagine an entire new arc where Vegeta and Goku visit Universe 6 Saiyans and they get to know their heritage? You know, uh, and, and, you know, where Planet... Uh, Vegeta is still around in Universe 6. Um, they could come up with a whole entire new storyline. Like, for instance, Kaba comes to Universe 7 uh, by using the Dragon Balls to get Goku and Vegeta's help with the waters breaking out in their universe. It could be the most awesome <laughs> freaking thing ever. You know what I mean? So, I really do think they need to do some more character development to Kale. Kale finally learned how to control her Berserker mode. They're not calling legendary Super Saiyan. They're calling it Berserker. So, uh, a Berserker Saiyan. But uh, she figured out when Khalifa was getting beat by the the, the Pride Troopers, Kale uh, just burst out. But she was able to control her key, and she became into this new buff form. It was like she was more smaller than she is. When she's in Berserk mode, she's a little smaller, but taller and muscular like a Super Saiyan. I wouldn't say Super Saiyan 2 or 3 or 1, just a regular Super Saiyan. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, a regular Super Saiyan. And so, she really did look lean and mean, and she was able to control a kid. But she wasn't able to hold it for a very long time, so she, she still had to figure that part out, so... But it was really awesome because they were stuck into this dimensional thing. And the Pride Trooper thought it was an easy kill, you know, easy uh, win. And so they went after the two of them. And Kale burst out of the dimension thing she was in. And when she did, uh, they shot Blast at the uh, Stone Trooper. So it was a beam struggle. And um, they shot Blast at them. And they was, you know, they couldn't believe that they were overpowered like that. Also... Um, they uh, 
when while they were having a bean struggle, uh, Kale, uh, Khalifa asked Kale to push for more, and Kale turned back into the berserker mode, but it was completely under her control, and she shot a beam out, and the combined beam just blew out three of the pride troops that was attacking them off. And so they left, and then that little bug one trooper, forget his name, he ran off. And uh, Casserole got knocked out by Android 18. Or, Adri yeah, Android 18. Easily. I mean, it was just no, it wasn't even a contest. So the Androids are doing very well. A lot of people think Android 18 is going to get knocked off next week. Because he's fighting Rebian, but I don't believe that either. So, um, all in all, the episode was pretty cool. I mean, uh, I thought they could have did a lot more with Goku than just make him look weak. So, um, Freeza's still up to his old tricks. And then Master Roshi, who I'm highly impressed with, that was like the funniest part of the episode, is where he, get this he put this guy in his technique. But he couldn't do anything to him but freeze him in his form. Tien comes in and helps Master Roshi, but he held his own. So, I thought episode 101 was a very good episode, uh, all in all. So, anyway, I'm looking forward to episode 102. You guys tell me what you thought about Dragon Ball Z Super episode 101. Put your comments down in the comment section below. And, uh... I will respond to them and all that good stuff. So, I'm Caruso from Caruso's Gaming and Reactions. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.